Hello and welcome back to the world of psychology. Perceptual psychology. New evidence on motion after effects. In case that you don't know what a motion after effect is, try the following experiment. All you have to do is to center your attention on the middle of the screen. And after about 20 seconds I will tell you to look away, for example at your hand, or just look around in your room and see what happens. Are you ready? Okay, let's get it started. So now you can look away from the screen. If you felt like you were on drugs, like you were high, don't worry, that's absolutely normal. That's the so-called motion after effect. And some of you might have already experienced it in real life. For example, when you look at a waterfall for one or two minutes, or when you always look at the same spot of a river, and you then look away, for example, right beside the waterfall, you get the impression that all of a sudden there is an upwards movement. And in order to experience this effect right now on your own, you just have to look at the red cross for some more seconds. Okay, now you can look right beside the waterfall. Did you get the impression of an upwards movement? Well, maybe it was quite blurry, because this effect is not that strong. But what's probably going on in your brain, among other things, is neural adaptation. So when you look at the waterfall, Neurons in your brain that are responsible for downwards movements become highly activated. This is just to inform you, well, there is a serious movement, realize that there is a movement. But as soon as you know that there is a movement, these neurons don't need to fire that strongly any longer and their activity goes down. And this really makes sense because on the one hand your brain saves energy and on the other hand it makes possible to react to even faster movements. Because if the downwards movement of the waterfall would cause constant maximum activation of these neurons, they couldn't react to even faster movements because they are already completely activated. There wouldn't be a possibility of being more activated. So this adaptation process really makes sense. But this adaptation process also leads to the phenomenon that as soon as we switch our attention to a static image, for example when we look right beside the waterfall, these neurons that process downward movements are less activated than in their baseline condition. And because they are less activated than usual, they are also less activated than those neurons that process the upwards movement. And it's probably this difference that causes the impression, well, there seems to be an upwards movement. Mm -hmm. 
To find out more about our visual perception and where it's processed in the brain, let's conduct a second experiment. And the question for the second experiment is, what do you think if you watch the video only with your right eye? So you keep your left eye closed, but as soon as you look away, you keep your right eye closed and you just look with your left eye. Could you imagine that the effect is still present? Well, let's give it a try. So keep one eye closed, it doesn't matter which one you choose, while you watch the video and as soon as I tell you to look somewhere else, just begin to look with the other eye. Okay, now you can look somewhere else. And did you feel like on drugs again? Probably this time the effect wasn't as big as when you were using both eyes. But the effect was still present and it tells us that this neural adaptation for sure doesn't only take place in the neurons right behind one of our eyes, in the neurons of the retina, but the adaptation process also takes place in higher centers in processing modules that are converging the information that come from both eyes. And in recent studies, and now it becomes even more crazy, in recent studies it could be shown that you even don't have to have your eyes open. It's already sufficient to imagine an upwards or downwards movement to create motion after effects. Of course the effects are much smaller and not comparable to the effects you might have experienced when you watched this example video. In fact, in these studies, people were shown groups of moving dots and they were forced to decide, well, do these dots move downwards or upwards? And when they had imagined an upwards movement, there was a little bias to say, well, I think these dots are moving in the opposite direction, downwards. And in an even more recent study published in 2013 by Stephen Hatcher and colleagues, they could show that this bias is even observable after listening to ascending or descending music. So when people were listening to a series of ascending music pieces, they got the impression that the dots are moving downwards. And this is really crazy and it tells us more about the strong link between the neurons of our perceptual systems, it tells us once more that there can be a feedback from our auditory system to our visual system. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you want, we will see you next time.